Adiel Chiganda Salongo. Amen. Amina. Amen. Amina. Last week I shared my testimony. But I want you to know that my testimony is so long. I'll be sharing it bit by bit, bit by bit. Because I'm a woman who has seen God. I've seen the hand of God. I've experienced the love of God. As an individual, praise be to God. I told you all what I went through. I also want you to know how God used people. As much as I had people who were mocking, people were laughing, but I had so many people who were standing with me in prayer. People have loved me. I want to say thank you so much for being there for me. There are people who are fasting for me. You can imagine that someone just decide to fast for you. It's not your relative. I just decide to say I'm going to stand in the gap for this woman. There are people who are praying for me forsaking their lives but thinking about me. There are people who reached out to me calling me, texting me just to find out how am I doing. And when I gave birth it was so early but people showed me love that I asked God do I really deserve all this? People gave me money. People came to the hospital. People calling. People were praying for Nakato. People were believing God for her life. And you are going to see her photos. As I will be talking, they will be showing her Amen. So be observant on the screen. There is power in prayer. There are people who stood in the gap just to believe with me. Because time came when we were shaken. My faith was shaken. But people were praying. Sending recorded prayers. I told you about the group that I opened. The WhatsApp group. WhatsApp group. We have the pastor's wife called Pastor Jacqueline Kiria who is in Canada, Ottawa. When I opened, she told us on a, it was on a Sunday. She said, God told her to fast. And the group has over 50 people. Almost everyone on the group was like, I'm in for fasting. I'm in for fasting. And why were you there fasting? They were fasting for miracles. They were praying for miracles. They were releasing prayers. Pastor Dorothy Musepa from South Africa. Mami Granny Slinza. Apostle Florence Kanyati. Women of God. Prophetess Caroline from UK. Prophetess Caroline All of the UK. these women, they were standing. Pastor Rose Kaziwe. Pastor Rose Kaziwe. That one, she's more than a sister. Oh yeah, singa unekupa kumira sister. When I gave birth, I wasn't. Uh, I hadn't uh, prepared anything like any clothes. Because I was planning to travel. So I not prepared anything like a diaper or whatever. I didn't have anything. But the first person to come to the hospital was Pastor Rose Kaziwe. And she looked in the room. There was nothing. She took off. And she bought things. That was the first things that I received. And she was there to encourage me, Pastor Susan. Pastor John Lutwama. Pastor John Lutwama. There are so many. Banji. The love that I received from people. Even that time. 
Mukasera, when it looked as if it would never happen, there were people who were there for me. That they would always tell me, don't worry. It will happen. I will never forget my spiritual mother. That's why you need a mentor in life. You need somebody whom you walk with in this journey of salvation. Apostle Florence from day one, she told me, Apostle Florence, my daughter, be strong, be courageous. You will give back. You will have children. I told her, Mommy, it's not easy. I'm a bishop's wife. The church is big. We have sons and daughters. They are getting married. They are conceiving. They are giving back. But me, what message can I give them? She told me you are not God. The one who created you knows you by your name. He loves you. Walk with him. Stand still. And you will see the salvation of the Lord. I do not want to lie to you. It wasn't easy to wait. It wasn't easy to believe. Because it was almost impossible. Because you conceive. But you know that in two months, yeah, something is going to happen. You won't even fear to go to the washroom. Because all of a sudden you see blood. And you are like, why me again? And it happened and happened. Praise be to God. It's important when you are married. Have friends in your in-laws. I do not know how to appreciate. I do not know what words I can use to describe my sister-in-law. My sister-in-love. Most of you, you know her, Auntie Sophie. She went through a lot because of me. This is a woman who has been there with me from day one. Auntie Sophie, where are you? Are you in the house? Auntie Sophie, Please come. I can't give this testimony minus you. People say that she went with me somewhere and they removed my uterus. Some people were bold to tell her, but she didn't tell me that moment. She was just praying with me. She's a person who would leave her house if she calls me and feels that I am down. She will leave whatever she's doing and will enter in my bedroom. And I cry holding her. She tell me, Mommy, we're going to go through this together. Because in church, she calls me Mommy. But she's a sister-in-law. She loved me. She took my pain. She took my situation. And walked with it. Many people were asking her, uh -huh, how about your sister-in-law? Remove them, them, the mask. I will not give you corona. <laughs> People are asking her. When? We, we don't hear anything. I should tell them she's still a mugole. But she knew the truth. Because everything I would tell her. We would go to the doctors together. And the doctor give us a report. We we'll park our car somewhere, the two of us. I'm crying and she's saying, Mommy, we cry together. After giving birth, she left her home. Before that, actually, when I conceived this pregnancy, I got so sick. That's the reason why you were not seeing me in church. I could vomit. The nausea was too much. 
I had too much fatigue. So I was sick. I didn't have appetite. She will leave her house. Come to my home. Cook for me. Mommy, it, even if it is small, eat one spoon. She will spend the whole day with, with me. me. Then she goes. So sometimes I'll be admitted because I will need drips because Golus, I was not eating. Golus, I remember one time I was admitted 14 days in the hospital. The devil fought this pregnancy. And she was there with me in the hospital. She's a married woman. She's a mother. She has children. She has a husband. But she would sleep on another bed to make sure she's with me. And she removed my, my, the vomits, she cleansed the buckets. She became my mother, she became my sister, she became almost everything. After all that, together with Bishop, by the way, Bishop would sleep in the hospital. Bishop would sleep on the couch to be with me to take care of me because I was so weak praise be to God when I gave back she left her home and she stayed with me in Nakasero hospital I told her the baby is too small I've lost my son the girl who has remained is too small she told me mommy our God will do it she became my pastor she was there to encourage me she was there to preach with me to preach to me to preach to me Praise be to God. And as I was, I was so discouraged because I looked at my baby. She was too small. And the devil whispered to me that she would not make it. And the, the, the doctors were telling me, pump the milk. We need the milk for the baby. And I didn't have the strength to pump the milk. And she would be there telling me, mommy, pump the milk. She would massage me with hot water. And I would pump the milk. Along the journey, when Miracle was already born, I got sick again. I got another attack. She came home. I think that's when Sengamadina also came. I was too small that you would think I have HIV. I was I could not even bath myself. She was bathing me. Oh, she, they rushed me again in the hospital. She was there with me, beside me. Say, mommy, we'll come out of this. Imagine I'm sick. I'm in the hospital. I have a daughter in NICU. In, 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 in Nasare. In the hospital. All that is happening at the same time. What will you do if you do not have God? And if you, do, if you are not surrounded by people who know God, the only word you will tell me, mommy will go through it, Nakato will survive. Nakato is a fighter. When I love her, allow me to love her. I don't even know whether what I'm doing is enough because it can never be enough. If I compare what she has done, it is so much being given in her money, her time, her prayers, sacrificing just to make sure I'm okay. Praise be to God. I came out of the hospital. I go. Because by that time, because I had to go to the hospital every day, morning and that evening, to check on my daughter. So we had to look for an accommodation in town. And we went in the total lockdown. She could walk from her home to the uh, um, apartment where I was living in town by foot because there were no border borders there were no cars but she would walk to come because when I got sick it's because I was too lonely 
I was thinking a lot. I was thinking about Waswa. I was thinking about Nakato. I was now thinking about my life. And I had so many questions to God. So that one alone grounded me. When she realized that I needed company, she would walk by foot just to come and spend the whole day with me. Then Bishop comes at night. So that I don't have any space of thinking but will make me laugh. And I want to also thank God for another woman who is in this church. She doesn't want me to mention her name but I'm going to mention her name because God used her like an angel. Time came when my, my my, my, my milk production reduced. They reduced, I had, but they, were, they reduced. A person who would pump uh, 300 mules, 500 mules a day, but I had lost to like 100 or 120, something like that. This woman, when she came to Bishop, and Bishop told her what I was going through. She went in Owino and bought things that they eat here to get milk. Uh, they, they call it, Birenge. Um, Morocone, exactly. Morocone. <laughs> And Entula, right? The green ones. Entula. She would cook them. I took things. And milk came back. And that is Mama Namaz. Agnes. God used these two women to make sure I am going, I'm doing well. I want to show you that sometimes when you are going through issues, you need people that stands with you. As much as you have people who are criticizing you, look at the other side. There are many who loves you. There are many who want to stand with you. I, uh, last week I never told you that Time came when I could receive letters. We have so many letters in the office. And these letters are what? Abusing me. She went to Bishop, told Bishop, Mommy should not get to know those letters. Or whether they are talking, they are not talking, we don't want to know. And Bishop told the security people, Bishop, security. do not allow Mommy to see those letters. People can abuse. People can accuse. I was born a Catholic. But in my whole life, I've never entered a shrine. But I was called that I went in the shrine. So many things that I don't know. She said, you will never read those letters. You will never see those letters. We have them there in the office there. And when I could be down and I tell her about all those things, she would just hold my hands and pray with me. We believed God together. We prayed together. We cried together. I want to say, Sophie, thank you. For me, she's not a sister. I know she's my sister in love. She's a friend. She's my sister. She has been there for me from day one. She has loved me. In that family where you are married, you must have friends there. They will stand with you. Just imagine a foreigner. You have no mother, you have no father, you have no sister, you have no brother. And you are in a foreign land. And the family you are married in, no one loves you. You can imagine. But God gave me this woman. Gave me. She's a blessing. Thank you, Auntie Sophie. You can sit down. I just want people to know and to say thank you so much for that love. She's a person who loves you genuinely. Not because of what you have, but genuine love. And also many of you in the house 
that loved me in my situation. You know, when someone is going through issues, it's very easy to interpret them wrongly. And it's very easy to interpret she's like this because of this. But many of you, instead you showed me love. Some you didn't tell me. But the smile you would give me alone was enough. The love you would give me was enough. Glory be to God. 